Is that a dramatic zoom? If you've been following along, you know that I raced my mountain bike a ton last year, and I got hooked. So I purposely got an Enduro Long Travel 29er to challenge and push myself to the limit for my all-exciting 2020 race season. But we all know how 2020 has gone so far. But despite all my race plans being cancelled, there's one race that's still happening. The Abajo Enduro down by Bears Ears in Monticello, Utah, just south of Moab. Now it's been a while since I've gotten everything together for race day, and I like to prepare for everything. Probably because from all my past experience, I've learned real quick that the saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, definitely rings true. Now this brings us to this video's sponsor, Buddy Insurance, accident insurance for adventurers like you and me. Now we invest in bikes and all the gear for top performance as well as high quality helmets and pads to protect us for the unexpected and sometimes inevitable. And like that body protection, Buddy Insurance is what I use to give me peace of mind to push myself to the limit in case I have an accident. Now like pads, I don't want to use it, but if I need it, I'll be really glad that I have it. Alright, it's the morning of, I did my yoga, had my coffee, had my PRD, gave myself a little haircut, showered, let's pack up and get going. I uh, think I have everything. Ugh, that shot's always so dumb. You, you know I've got to come back for the camera. I don't know why we all do it. So who is Buddy, you ask? They are mountain bikers and adventurers like you and me who created an accident insurance catered to us. It pays you cash if, well, when, you get hurt and need to go to the hospital. But I already have health insurance, you say. Well, for us US citizens, if you're like me, I'm $4,000 out of pocket to fill my deductible before my insurance coverage even kicks in. Now, I like to insure my race and adventure days with Buddy for less than $10 a day, and it gives me peace of mind knowing that if I do have an accident and need to pay my deductible, then Buddy kicks in with cash to help me cover those expenses. I don't have $4,000 laying around if a helicopter has to get me off this mountain. About to drop in? No problem. You can register online right now from your phone and get covered in about 90 seconds and Buddy's got your back. Kind of YouTube celebrity where I come from. Yep. Also out here is a bike celebrity where <laughs> I come from. We're both vlogging. At the Crashing Dad. At Tim DeCosta. Don't at me. Oh, royalty. Cele local celebrity. My YouTube channel, The Crashing Lad. The crashing Lad and The Crashing Dad. I thought you'd be in spandex today. Yeah, for Arrow Game. <laughs> Did you get some good picks? Yeah. Always. So to lay the foundation for the Abahu Enduro, it's all at elevation. Shuttles drop you off at 9,300 feet and you climb two and a half miles and quickly gain 1,200 feet to get to 10,500, where the air is thin and the lungs are weak. Then you drop into a four and a half mile long stage that loses 2300 feet, which sounds simple enough, right? Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, Go. dude. Shea Ridge is a double track moto trail with loose baby heads heaping in the lower side. Ah, woo. Ah, I don't want to be in this. Intentions of staying up high on the smooth side are nice to think about, but the tree branches, corners, and natural fast lines force you down into treacherous rocks that are always about to throw your front wheel offline and have you eating boulders for lunch. Ugh. I hate dropping into this. Hey, Hell yeah, dude, kill it. Have fun, buddy. As this stage determines start times for tomorrow, for me, it's all about survival. Crashes and flat tires are oh, slow. Are you okay? Oh, that is even worse than last year. Hit it. Are you okay, dude? Oh no, finger broke. So I push it at about 80% and don't take too many risks. Yes, I love and thrive in chunk, especially coming from Grand Junction. But most of our chunk is stuck to the ground and even great riders have a hard time here. Oh, almost lost it. Oh, f dude, pulling over. Sorry. A lot of much faster riders dropped in after me, and it's just the name of the game in racing. I'm trying to learn my race manners, and I don't mind just pulling over for them to get by. Oh. Sorry. Yes. No. 
Even though I rode this last year, erosion has taken over. And with every passing day, it gets more gnarly and loose. This year's winning time was over two minutes slower than last year. I personally was 41 seconds slower than last year, so with science and relativity calculations, I am exactly five burritos faster than I was a year ago. That's a terrible place. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so loose, oh my gosh. My favorite thing about racing is the people, the shared camaraderie, and the stoke. It doesn't matter where you stand on the results sheet, we're all in this together, especially at the Abajo and Girl. Oh! Yeah. Hey, I forgot to turn my Strava! Are you serious? <laughs> so I feel pretty good about that one. No crashes, just off the trail a few times. I'm just here to give the pros a run I'm for their hard, money. You think you really broke it? Uh, no, I think I'll be okay. Since this is a two-day, three-stage race, it's time for us to recover. I slept in my car last year, but this year I'm pitching a tent. I know it's not glamorous, but there's just something about camping that completes the adventure for me. I might not eat, bathe, or sleep like a king, but I get to be a dirtbag enduro racer for a weekend. I suppose with these, I'm just asking for diarrhea, but man, I love cherries when they're in season. I just can't help it. Oh man, last night I'll say I didn't, I didn't sleep very well. All the people in my tent were uh, farting a ton. Also, the blow-up mattress was kind of a bust. I ended up just deflating it because I woke up at like 3 a.m. with a super sore neck and I couldn't go back to sleep until, I don't know, maybe four. Tis the, tis the life of camping. I feel like this morning's breakfast was kind of odd. I thought I was buying an instant oatmeal, but it ended up being a flapjack that you need to put in the microwave, so I ended up eating a pancake dough this morning for breakfast. All right, let's get into town. Find a place to get in a, a good PRD, maybe some food, I don't know. Let's get to town. I will say, they did have to make accommodations for COVID this year. Masks, open air shuttles, but uh, I'm kind of enjoying this whole open air thing. You're not in a big old stuffy shuttle. Yeah, this is, this is really nice. So thank you, Rome Industry. All right, today we have two stages ahead of us. The first is Robertson's Pasture, starting off with a short scenic road descent to a mile long climb that gains 520 feet. Now it might not sound like much, but when your starting elevation is 10,000 feet, it's a butt kicker to wake you up for the day. Three, two, one. Thank you. <laughs> Then once you're good and tired, Robertson's Pasture offers 5 miles and 2100 feet of elevation loss with side cut switchbacks, four single track, steepness at the top and bottom, with a lot of pedaling and short punchy climbs in the middle. It's also one of those stages that potentially changes every year, but not so much from big rocks, but from fallen trees everywhere. My brakes got wet and dusty, and they're totally giving me up at every chance they get. But maybe if I use them less, I can get a better race time, or more trips to the hospital. Oh no! This stage is long, and the average finish time is 25 minutes, with the faster guys closer to 20. Now it's stages like these that make me think that I should invest more into being fit again. When it comes to the vicinity of my handlebars to trees, I am definitely out of my element as a desert rat, but it's pretty rad to see him flying by. There are also several spots where it's overgrown, and you can't look more than six feet down the trail, so you end up having to ride it right as it hits you. Man, I feel weaker than I was last year. Now it's interesting to see that I actually got the exact same time on this stage as I got last year. But with my super exact oh, science calculations, I was 3.5 street tacos faster this year due to a major reroute around a fallen tree that slowed all of us down. <sighs> oh, man. 
Woo. Dad Bod. <laughs> that oh. Good job, that was fun. Good job, dude. You did it. Woo. Yeah. Oh man. That went so hard. Camping at Foy Lake, I think is a good decision because you drop down and does stage two. And you can leave water, protein drinks, Uncrustables, extra wheels. Oh man. From here, Rome Industry shuttles you back up to the final stage, the same 10,000 foot elevation drop off spot as stage two. But the single track transfer is only half a mile, and according to my Garmin, we only climbed 60 feet to get to the start. At this point, it felt like a thousand foot climb. I guess it's not enduro if you're not pooped. Welcome to the 2020 final of the Abahu Enduro Race. We're about to take off this way for everybody to start. And <laughs> go ahead. Hey, that's a pretty good <laughs> intro, dude. You gotta take my place. Three, two, two one. one. Get it, get it. Yeah. Ah, thank you guys. Spring Creek is four miles long and descends 1,400 feet with just under 200 feet of climbing and traversing in the middle. It doesn't sound like much, but with thin air, it's a burner. Woo. Now, I'm no cross-country legend, but I feel like if you have the fitness, like the last stage, there's a lot of time to be gained here. From all my racing experience, I've learned that fitness is key. You can gain seconds on the downhill, but you can gain minutes on the uphill. For me though, it's all about survival and not redlining too much. Perfect! Oddly enough, this felt like my best stage, even though my gas tank was close to empty. It wasn't as steep as the last two stages and I felt like I could get into my flow much easier without having to squeal on the brakes too much. Woo! Yeah. Okay, two rocks, here comes the road. Last year, I thought this road was the finish, but I was ready this year to get back on the pedals for a gnarly road descent. Oh, I forgot about this. Ugh. Woo! first stage, there's a fair amount of loose baby heads, but it was more manageable, and I felt like it was easier to let it wide open. Yeah! Two-wheel drift! <laughs> 17! Now I'm gonna celebrate because I beat last year's time by over a minute, giving me a lead over last year's Shane by 27 seconds overall. Now my goals this weekend were to improve over last year, have a blast with friends, and to not crash, so I'll call that a win. A massive thanks to Rome Industry for putting on such a great event and making it happen during a time when we needed an escape with a breath of fresh air, uh, above 10,000 feet. <laughs> Now this video would not have happened without the support of my friends at Buddy. I want to thank them again and say that, gladly, I didn't end up having to use their service. But my buddy Ryan might end up having to. You alright? I don't know. Dude, you wrap around a tree? Hard, bro. Oh, like man. I'm sorry. I got it on Insta and on the GoPro. So if you're racing your bike, hitting up the DH Park, summiting a mountain peak, kayaking, doing parkour, or anything adventurous you can think of, consider clicking the Crash and Dad Buddy link below and getting Buddy on your side. It supports the channel and shows awesome companies that it's worth supporting small YouTubers like me make these videos. Now thanks for coming along with me on this race adventure, and we'll see you guys next time. That was a good, that was a good vlog. Did you like that? Yeah, I think okay. you're, you're gonna get, I'm gonna hang, you're gonna get the hang of this. <laughs> I'm gonna hang the get of this? <laughs>